Deep in the heart of the Ozark Mountains, a new tradition is being born. A tradition of American forest monks that will follow the original practices of the Buddha. After 25 years of meditation practice, Bhante Vimala Ramsey has come back to his home country of the USA and settled into a rural area of Missouri that is two hours south from the city of St. Louis. When I got ready to go to Asia, <clears throat> I quit my job, which I was very successful at. And I went to San Francisco, and there I was going to fly to Rangoon. And the night before the, the plane flight, I went to a public shower at the YMCA. And I took a shower, and I'd opened up my locker, and I forgot something in the shower. There was a towel that I forgot. So I walked back to get it, and when I came back, my money and my passport and all of my ID was gone. So I had to start all over again and saved up money. And it, it took a little while but eventually I got up enough money to go back to Asia, and there I became a monk. Anyway, while I was in Burma, I did many, many three-month retreats, between 12 and 15 of them. I did an eight-month retreat in Burma, and this was the time in 1988 when they had their social unrest and they kicked all of the foreign monks out of the country. And then it took me two years to get back in the country to get the visa and that sort of thing. Then I did a two-year retreat at Chamye Yeta with Saida Ujanika. At the end of two years, he told me that I was ready to go out and teach, but I wasn't satisfied. I didn't feel like I'd gotten as much as I, I should have. I went back to Malaysia. Many people were very interested in having me teach the Burmese method of meditation. But I didn't feel like it led to what it talked about in the suttas. It didn't lead to Nibbana the way that I was explained Nibbana. So instead of teaching uh, the Vipassana, what I did was started teaching loving-kindness meditation. And that became very popular in, in Malaysia. Um, there were sometimes I was giving huge retreats, many sometimes as, as many as 75 people. And then at one point I was asked to go to the largest monastery in Kuala Lumpur by K. Sri Damananda, who has just since died not too long ago. It so happens that there was a monk that came from Sri Lanka that was a meditation teacher, and he asked me how I taught. So I explained to him the way that I was teaching, and he told me, you're teaching exactly right, but you're using the language of commentaries. Why don't you put the commentaries down and then go to the suttas and just use your suttas as your guide? So that's what I did. And as soon as I did that, there were light bulbs going off in my mind. I was understanding everything in the suttas because I didn't have the overlayment of the commentaries to kind of cloud my thinking. Since then, I have developed a way of teaching where I read the sutta so you know that it's not coming from me and explain what the suttas mean. So this has been a very practical and amazing path 
that I've been on. So this is a cootie and this is a modern day cootie and the, that means it is a meditation cabin for up to four people. So over the next two years, what can Dhammasukha Meditation Center expect in United International Buddha Dhamma Society? We will be sending Bhante uh, to the universities to do uh, talks about the compatibility for the different traditions to come together and work together for different peaceful coalition projects in the United States. We're hoping that they will share what's working for the lay person and we can share what is successful with the meditation practice for people to ease suffering. And then we will work and continue to teach online and we will continue to do reaching out for training monastics to teach in English in the United States, no matter what their tradition is, to teach Dhamma English. And we will also expand our program for the disability project where we have one cabin and we'll add two or three more to that circle. And that's pretty much what will happen. The dining hall and kitchen will be the first thing to be finished. So we'll have expanded some of our meditation space inside up here. And then of course, we're going to be building a Dhamma village which will start in another, about a year's time. That will pick up and start with people moving into our Dhamma village, which is next door to the monastery. And that will help us to eventually be able to have monastics who can go on Pendipot from our ordination program. Uh, in the last few years, we've been teaching people online. And we've been fairly successful with that by using the computer. They can be at home. They take their five precepts in the morning. They sit and practice meditation. Then they can go to work. At lunchtime, they take another little period of time for meditation. Then they can come home and listen to a Dhamma talk and then write to me about what's happening in their practice. And then they can sit a little while longer. So it's kind of a a new way of doing a retreat, but you get the chance to practice all day long that way. We found this to be quite successful and people do progress very nicely when they do that. Well, I've been a Buddhist for about 40 years practicing Vipassana meditation for most of that. And then a year ago, a little over a year ago, I decided to uh, enroll in a retreat that was led by Bhante Villamaramsi. A friend of mine had uh, recommended that I do such and uh, it changed my life in wonderful ways. Uh, having been a Buddhist to really see the Dharma unfold in front of me, practicing this tranquility insight meditation was a revelation and uh, within a few days I had experienced in meditation uh, what I hadn't been able to do in practicing the straight vipassana technique for maybe nearly 40 years and in a dozen retreats. So I'm very grateful to Bhante for doing that and as the retreat went on uh, I experienced even deeper states of meditation. One of the most recent developments is Ustream. Ustream reaches out to the person and they can see you while you are teaching and they can email questions to you and then you can answer them directly to the people. So what we're trying to do is get back to the original teaching of the Buddha. And the more that I read the suttas to people, the easier they understand. An awful lot of people are looking for a path that they think is very complicated. But the Buddha's teaching is very simple. Not always easy, but very simple to understand. This is the path that does lead to liberation.